Okay, so uh, if you are a still subscriber of Swiss Time, so this month, 8th of August, you probably can see this very nice five inspired game that we actually created, which is created by my team. So you see, it's a two spread. You know how much it costs to get a two spread? Eh? So, <laughs> on a, so, so this was a, a, so just to introduce myself first. Uh, so uh, I'm Yongjin. So I'm a JavaScript ninja. I also love Vue, so you can ask me anything about Vue. I work at Street Times Interactive Graphic Team. So we build stuff like uh, if they need to visualize data in a more digital way, or whatever. So we build uh, we, we will build these uh, small apps for them to actually promote uh, just to tell story in a more interactive way than just print or, or just flat digital stories. So uh, here's my GitHub handle. So uh, just a few months ago, so I just become a dad. And my beautiful wife is over there. <laughs> so just to say that being JavaScript ninja does not prevent you from having a family. <laughs> yeah. But certainly working in a newsroom does have some <laughs> challenge. Yeah, so so actually I'm gonna talk about this game that we created. So because uh National Day is coming, then they say uh, oh, we need to create something interactive again. So what are some of the things we can do? So we came up with this idea of doing a Five Wally inspired game. So 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 the inspiration is of course from Five Wally. Actually a big part was from this uh Washington Post they also did something similar for Christmas. So I, I can show you all how it looks right, for them. So you actually can find Santa Claus inside. I have the link attached so you can, can play around with it. When, you're, when you find my talk a bit boring or what. So, so also last year actually MinDev actually commissioned one of our one of our art member to actually produce this MINDEF defense puzzle and I was I feel it's totally wasted that they didn't build anything digital it's just released as a image and they print it everywhere then say oh go find something but they don't produce a digital digital version for people to play with it, and it's such a waste so so this time we decided to do it right so we create NDP Han uh, NDP Han. So you all can. The link is the, the link is down here. So you if you are on on my slide, you can just play. So so you will just I will just demo a bit first. So you can start the game. Then you say like find some lions. Then obviously there's one down here, and you can click, and you see it will glow up, indicating that it's you, you have found one, and you can see there's a score keeper down here. So you see that like you can zoom, you can pan around when you zoom. So, so how is this thing? So by the way, this thing was built. Uh, another part of the best story was this thing we built it in two weeks, which is really crazy for my designer to draw such a detailed picture out in two weeks. By the way, the, the MinDev one, I show you all. We, so when we had this idea, we want to do this. So we decided to consult and say, oh, uh, so how long you all took to, to draw the MinDev one? It's also a one person effort. He took two months to draw this. <laughs> so, so you can see how inbound my designer is. Uh. So, 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 uh, so building this, like, so we thought like, okay, the first thing is I need, I need some idea actually how to go about building it. So if you're a follower of Google, you're uh, we are aware that they actually did something similar also this year in March. So, so it's uh, quite interesting that like why is it Google Maps? 
So as it turns out, actually building this with a map engine actually makes your job a lot easier. Because map, map engine already have all this pan and zoom functionality already built in already. So, so in our case, we actually use Mapbox GL to build this. So it's actually built off Mapbox GL. So we actually have three different layers to, we set up three different layers. So the, obviously the picture is one layer, the, the base layer. Then you actually have an interaction layer, which is actually transparent. So, so that's the, uh, it's transparent, but it's, it's listening to your click events. So, so it will know that you are clicking on the right spot. So we actually outline all the answers out and, and then code it into GeoJSON form that I can upload into Map, Mapbox GL and serve it out. Then finally, there's the overlay layer because you see when you click the correct one, it will grow up. So, so, there's a, so there's, we build it in this like three layer format. So of course, I said that there's a challenge be, because when they draw the outline out for the, when my designers draw the outline out for me, it's in SVG, it's exported in SVG. It looks, it looks like this. So it's just purely SVG path. But Mapbox GL require that same information in show JSON form. So how do I actually do that? So as it uh, is not that too difficult. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Because SVG path has this me method called get point and length and get total length. So I just need to get the total length. I split it into 100 points, equally space point. Then I just find out all the points, which will give me the S, Y in the SVG's coordinate system. Then of course, I need to convert this SVG coordinate system to my JoJSON coordinate system because, uh, so, uh, so this is just a linear mapping function. So you just take the maximum, maximum of the SVGY minus maximum of the uh, minimum of the SVGY, then multiply by the maximum of the JoJSON Y minus minimum of the JoJSON Y. It's, it's very simple math, no, no much magic behind it. But the thing to need to be careful of is your SVG uh, bounding box, you need to remember SVG, the direction is different, Y direction is different. Because bounding box is uh, bottom left, top right. So remember, so SVG, the bottom left is actually zero and the height, not zero, zero like Joe song. So just need to make sure this is correct. Then I just do a, a transform to transform everything into a Joe song coordinate system and you will look something like this. So everything converted to, converted to the Joe song coordinate system, which I will upload to, upload to my Mapbox Studio. So right now I actually make it visible, but actually it, when it actually comes out, it's actually invisible. But it's actually there to listen to the click events. So, so yeah, so back to uh, why using a map has this advantage is also Mapbox Geo actually hide everything for you. So when you see actually it's just one pure flat canvas. There's no way, no way you can cheat to actually see, see the items. Everything is flattened by my boss and and also because it's your, you're using a map so your three layers so if you try to build it yourself yes you can build your panning and zooming yourself but but then you need to handle things like like the three layers need to all pan and zoom at the same time so it, it's, it's too complicated to build do it yourself so it's actually much easier, easier just use a map engine to build so, so this is one part of it. So the next interesting part, I'd like to share one of the challenge. Like if you play again, you, you see there's this very nice, uh, there's some feedback that you actually create because we use the material design ripple effect. So how to actually add this effect in? Because we built this off view, so this will now be a lesson on advanced view usage. So. So this part was, is the, the simple part. You just create a, a CSS animation for the Reaper to open up. So, but if I just use this and I just insert a Reaper, the problem is when I click another spot, it will reuse the, it will reuse the same Reaper, 
and the animation will not will not show up. So you need to make sure that view will always create a new DOM object, and then the report will show up. So, so the trick here is my Reaper, I actually draw it as a, I actually I actually created it in within an array. So so in in view when you do a V4 with key so view will make sure as long as the key is different it will actually make sure you re-render the you re-render the element out of it. So this is actually very important. So I can show you what happens if if I actually take out the key so demo here you see okay, sorry. see the first time I click the report will show but subsequently it does not show already because view actually reuse the DOM element so so the trick is to actually give it a key so give it a key that is unique all the time so I just use date dot now so you make sure you always create a new create a new ripper and this is the, the trick of creating this material design ripper effect review the review the so the next interesting part about this project is that it's actually a scoring. A, score, a scoring. If you play finish the game, which I will just quickly run through. So I just skip, 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 skip. And you say, oh, do you want to continue? No. Uh, do you want to quit? Then you will. you show you your rank out here so this rank part is interesting I set up a back end based on AWS to, to actually calculate out this rank so the, the technical challenge here is because I'm using a NoSQL database that charged by the number of access to it so okay another bad story so so one day I was I went to work and my boss suddenly called out and said that he's uh, Firebase bill came out to be five hundred dollar. So, for so 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 I I went went to help him check. And I see what's wrong. How come suddenly Firebase bill can come out to five hundred dollar? So it was it turned out it was it was a really stupid project. So it was this like five what Trump can say he's just there to store the response. It's just a simple poll project that you store how many people say yes, how many people say no. But this project turned out costing us five hundred dollars of five days bill in one month because my intern developer so he, he designed the database in the wrong way, so he actually stored every single response. And when you want to see the result of how many percent people responded, he actually had to pull out the entire database all the time. So it, it became a, a very stupid design that, that incurs so so similar in this case, but case is different because to get rank you actually do need everybody's else score to know your rank within everybody else score you do need to know everybody else score. so you need to design it in a way that that smartly without having to actually fetch every single record from your database so of course there is another easy way is I just store everything into a single record then every time just fetch that whole record out resort everything then store it back in but then then you will not be able to get concurrency Concurrency because uh, in our case, which is important because in our case, uh, we are in the media industry, right? When I, uh, I, I release my, my app, everybody will play the app at the same time. So after one month, no one will play your app already. So everyone will be hitting your app at the same time. So you need certain level of support for concurrency. So the solution that we, I figure out eventually is that it's actually this special data structure called order statistic tree, which is a variant of binary tree if you come from a com size background you should be familiar with BS, BST so you just need to store all your score in a BST but it's a slightly different BST in the sense that you actually also store the number of nodes under each so at the top node there's 
uh, it, it has seven nodes under each. So you store the subtree size for each. So so every time you try to add a new new item, what you need to do is you just need to there's a way to actually calculate. So you just need when it, when it transverse down, every time you go to the right node, just remember to take this number minus this number. So let's say I insert a number six. So I start from the root node, which is seven, because I'm going to the right side. So I need to take seven minus four, so three. Then when I come down here, because it's left side, I don't need to do anything. Then next, I know I need to go to the right side to insert. So I'll take two, two minus zero, because there's nothing down here at the moment. So I need to add three plus two, five. Then finally I add one, then which will give me the rank that is number six. So it's a very intelligent way to store ranking. And because it's a BST, you only need a log n access to the database. Then, of course, as you go down, traverse down, you need to make sure you also increase each number by one, because now, now you're actually adding one more node to your tree. So, so I actually implemented this thing in DynamoDB, which I shared the code down here. For those that are really hardcore com size, you all can actually have a look. So with this done, I actually managed to implement ranking, and you can see, like for my game, there's actually like almost twenty thousand players. So, but I managed to keep the database cost low without incurring a five hundred dollar bill for it. It's still in the free tier, basically at the end of the day. So this is another interesting part. Uh, so the final part is just to make things even more interesting, we decided to implement analytics for our game. So you all know, ask why I want to do it. I just do it for fun because I'm an engineer. Like I want to see how people play my game, our game. So actually I implement the analytics. So every time they click, I actually, I actually record which item they click correctly. If they click wrong, I also record. I store everything into a database, track their behavior. So from there, we can do some data collection and actually find some interesting stuff like how much time they spend on the game. So average time people spend on this game is 38 minutes. So in the media world, 38 minute engagement is like astronomical. But of course, it's useless engagement. We should have put in some ads into our pictures. <laughs> so, the fastest guy was 41 seconds. Is a them. If you all have read the newspaper, we all actually we all actually identified the guy. He's a civil servant that played this game 16 times <laughs> <laughs> to achieve. Then you see number two is probably his girlfriend, and number three is his mother or something like that. <laughs> so he played. So even like we actually after this, we actually interviewed him. Then he said he. He actually even like find the shortest way to click through everything. So there are people who are really, which is, which is very uh, exciting to hear this stuff as an engineer because you guys actually, people actually are so serious about the game you are building. And all this, I wouldn't know if I had not actually implemented analytics to it. And you can also see brute force attack, like one guy actually just randomly click 188 times for, for each correct answer. So he clicked like almost like 6,000 times like that to, to finish the game. And we can also use uh, some smart way to actually figure out like, which are the hardest items to find. So, which is like these five items. So, so that uh, wraps up like, my uh, journey to, through this project of building this fun game. So, that, so okay, uh, by the way, so um, our interactive graphics team are hiring. So anyone who are, who seen my presentation and think that whatever we are doing is interesting can actually approach me. I leave my contact down here already. Yep, that's all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Any questions? Uh, does that mean you fired the intern? <laughs> 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 No, he actually uh, he left before we found out about the problem. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so you 
thinking about something like this as well. But the, the concern that I have is, is it, is it work on a mobile phone system? Is it as... Ah, uh, yes. Uh, you can see... Is it scale uh, Because it's, you can pan and zoom, so it's not a big problem on mobile phone. We just need to change out some of the components to make it look smaller. Right. Yeah. So how's the debugging experience? I'm sure you the issues here. Debugging experience. Uh, can't really recall because it was a mad rush to complete this in two weeks time. <laughs> yeah. But I'm assuming that it's able to pass the information that you require to see whether the clicks are being registered correctly in the text. Yeah, because because I can test it locally first. Yeah, yeah. So the the event tracking is all locally until the end of the game. Okay. So this event is is tracked is tracked locally on the client side. Only when the game completed, then I send this entire chunk to the the server. Yeah. So so it's not not too hard to. Debug. But yes, the, the ranking part because I implement on DynamoDB, yeah, that, that, that part was hard to, to debug. So from the map box to communicate outwards is actually quite easy to manage. Actually, yeah, I communicate through the view. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, the map box will send an event, then my view will capture the event and, right. and register in the event list and then. Uh, but you have mechanism there, uh, the observables, and you can see things are changing, and therefore you can Yes. Oh, uh, actually, just uh, sharing something that was missed out in the presentation uh, by Shannon just now. Like, one other nice thing about Vue is it has really nice dev tool that you can use. That so you can see there. So let's say I start my game. So you can see my event list now has one item, which is the game start. Every time I randomly click, then the event list update. So the debugging is actually very, very easy when you, when you use Vue. Yes. Uh, as you mentioned you used about the school. Uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, as you also mentioned some government currency. Uh, like, did you end up using a single record or was it multiple records? For multiple records? Yes. Multiple records? Yes. Okay. The, the, the design of the. The design of this. Uh, BST is, I cannot assume DynamoDB is reliable because sometimes requests actually, actually didn't get through. But in, even in failure, it will, it will not impact the ranking tree too much. It will not break the ranking tree because the process is every, you just traverse down and increment one along the way. DynamoDB has an atomic, atomic increment, which I, which I may use also. So, so even if, it traverses halfway. Somehow it did it, it hang. So at most, it is it will just treat that you are adding a value number five. Let's say it traverses halfway. Let's say you tra you are adding a number six. Traverses halfway, it hang at six. It will just treat that you you are actually adding a number seven down here. Let's say it, it hang at this node. It will just increase this number one. We actually adding a new node down here. So it's equivalent is just saying I add another value to number seven. So and and this this because of the atomic increment in DynamoDB, it actually also support concurrency. It won't have any problem if two percent actually uh, uh traversing the tree at one go. The only problem is if they traverse and reach the same spot at the same time, but it's quite unlikely for that to happen once your tree get beyond a certain size. So this this is a bit technical. Um, I think the obvious question is when are you going to make it procedurally generated? 
<laughs> so you don't have to take like two weeks to make one, but you can have like two weeks to make infinite drawings. <laughs> the, the, the limiting factor is the designer drawing. <laughs> yeah. So, but because I use view, so actually this five wally component is built, and then just when you change out the the drawing, all the logic will still work. Just when you change out the drawing, change out the the map box, JSON layer, and so it's reusable actually. But because uh, I can't really share my code with you because otherwise it's it's, it's ST's property, uh, Street Times property. <laughs> so that's why I didn't put it out on GitHub. But I did share the, the implementation for the the order statistic tree on DynamoDB. Yeah. So that's cool. Any more questions? Thank you.